Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group, which hopefully won't be too gravelly because I think I finally shed my cold. This week's topic is, do you have a favorite season to read about? Uh, not directly, but certainly indirectly. It's one of my favorite genres is horror. And the initial, the roots of that are the ghost stories of M.R. James and so on, which are set in Christmas. They were read at Christmas, so most of them are set around Christmas. And Gothic literature, which is full of stormy nights and mysterious fogs, that's carried through into threads of the modern day that lots of people see ghost stories and horror as a huddled round the fire thing. So they tend to write, they tend to have that image in their head when they write it. And also, from a more practical point of view, if you want a horror story where there is some doubt, where the characters see something and they're not sure, it's hard to set it during a bright sunny day. Because the difficulties you'd have creating a situation where the protagonist saw something but wasn't sure what it was are higher if it's a clear, well-lit day. So naturally, certain types of horror lend themselves to bad weather and the night, both of which are more late autumn to early spring things. And touching on the night specifically, within horror, my favourite area, probably vampires, which, whilst they don't all need to avoid sunlight, it is a major trope of vampire fiction that they only come out at the night. And late autumn to early spring, is when the nights are the longest, so vampires are the most active. So, generally, both because that's an unconscious tug in many authors' minds, and because structurally it's easier, my favourite stories are set during the winter half of the year. That said, when it works, when it's, a when it's a specific thing, good weather can be a major source of horror. Not directly horrific, but as a contrast to things. So a lake in winter is grim and cold. The lake in summer is warm and pleasant and there are birds singing. And so someone disappearing below the surface if they go into a lake in February, it's not a good thing. It's a terrible thing. Someone disappearing at any point, but viscerally you kind of expect it. Whereas if someone goes into a swimming hole in August to escape the heat, it's a lovely day, and suddenly, plump, they're gone. There's more horror there because it's running contrary to the pleasantness. So I would say that secondarily, I like to read about wintry stories. But where the author has put the season at the front, 
they've decided <coughs> this will be part of the story rather than background colour to the story. Having it set in an incongruous time, so a tale of horror and loss during the spring when everything is coming up, roses, literally, can be very powerful. <clears throat> the second time that season affects my reading is in science fiction, where it's not the normal seasons of Earth. So it moves away from the temperate climate that I'm used to in the United Kingdom, past the more extreme climates of some parts of Earth, into non-terrestrial seasonal systems. I'm thinking of, to an extent, that in Game of Thrones, where the winter comes, and winter is horrific, and also Heliconia, where the seasons are immensely long, immensely long. Entire books set during one season, and they're not thin books. So again, there where the season is part of why things are happening, rather than a background to be coped with or contrasted with. So for me, I think I'd like, I like to read about not any one particular season per se, but I like to read about seasons where they are at the front of the story rather than something that happens, where they're more than it's winter, so things are grey, which generally fits depressing mood. Uh, toodaloo!